Number 47, a solution contains 1.0 times 10 to the negative second moles of potassium iodide, which is Ki, and 0.1 moles of potassium chloride, uh, KCl, per liter. Then they say AgNO3 is gradually added to the solution. Well, which forms first, solid AgI or solid AgL? I don't know, but let's see. So we're talking about precipitation, right? Which one is going to form first, either a solid precipitate of AGI or a solid AGCL? Well, this comes from our solubility products. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP values are for these two compounds. The KSP for AGCL is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 16th, and the uh, AGI KSP is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16th. So, um, generally speaking, if these were saturated solutions, right, generally the smaller one would precipitate out first. However, we have different moles that are affecting the outcome. So in this case, we have to find out according to what common ions we have, what the molar solubility of each compound is. And from there, we'll be able to find out which one precipitates first. So let's go forward. With KSPs, we got to write out the two balanced equations. So let's just do AgCl first, right? So AgCl, that's a solid double arrow because we're talking about equilibrium. Ag and Cl, a silver is always a plus one charge. It's a transition metal that only has the one charge. And chloride ion, halogen group, Cl minus, right? It's already balanced, so we're good with that. We'll put this off to oh, we'll put this off to the one side. Now let's just do the other one for AGI. So AGI, that's a solid double arrow equilibrium. Breaks down into the silver plus, which is aqueous, and we have I minus. It's already balanced, so I'm just gonna throw this over to the other side. Okay, cool. Now from here, we have to find out what is being affected. So let's take the Ki value first, right? So we have Ki. Now they did tell us that we had 1.0 times 10 to the negative second moles of Ki per liter. Remember, the word per is a fancy way for just saying division, right? So I have mole per liter. Well, mole per liter, that's the same thing as molarity. So now I have 1.0 times 10 to the negative second molarity of potassium iodide. Out of these two ions, right, because Ki is aqueous, group one metals always dissolve 100% into K plus and I minus. Out of these ions, which one is a common ion and for which compound? Well, I notice the I minus matches the I minus up here. So I don't even care about the potassium. I just care about the I minus. And since there's one Ki for every one iodine in the compound, the starting molarity for the Ki would be just the molarity for the I minus. And that's what we're going to be starting with, with the I minus. So I know that my I minus concentration is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative second molarity. And from there, we don't know how much Ag plus we have. So that's what I'm going to solve for. I'm going to label that as X. Let's do the same thing for the other one, just to get it out of the way. So for example, I have now K. Cl. They told me that I had 0.1 moles per liter, but moles per liter is the same thing as molarity. And K plus and Cl minus. Which ion do I care about? Well, yeah, the Cl minus, right? The Cl minus is the same for this equation. And since it's one CL or one KCL for every one CL, this amount would also be 0.1 molarity. And that's your starting amount 
for this one. So 0 0.10 molarity. I don't know what the silver concentration is, so I'm going to label that as X. Okay, so now pause the video, because I'll just get rid of this. So, bye-bye. But now I can use my general KSP equation, which is this right here, right? KSP is just equal to the products raised to the coefficients, and I'll write out both equations. So for this one, my KSP would equal the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of Cl minus. And on this side, the KSP would equal the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of I minus. Okay. Ag plus, I don't know what that is. Cl minus, 0 0.10. And the KSP is the one that we had to look in the back of the chapter for the AgCl, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. So let's just solve this one real quick. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x times 0 0.10. Divide by 0 0.10 on both sides. And then we will get x equals. Okay. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th divided by 0.1. I get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9th. And that's molarity. Okay. Now keep in mind that this is the molarity for the Ag+, plus because that's what we stated it as. We said that the Ag+, plus was x. And also, this can be viewed as the molar solubility. So it only takes 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9th molarity in order to start forming a precipitate or a solid. So I'll just link that up right here, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9th molarity. Okay, so let's do now the math for the other side. Ag is going to be x. We're taking these numbers into consideration now. I minus is 1.0 times 10 to the negative second. And the Ksp is the one that we had to search in the back of the textbook. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16th. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16th equals x times 1.0 times 10 to the negative second. Cool beans, let's divide. 1.0 times 10 to the negative second on both sides. x equals, and maybe I will cancel that out. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16th divided by 1 times 10 to the negative second. I get 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14th, and that's molarity. Keep in mind that this was also equal to the Ag+, plus, but also this can be viewed as the molar solubility for AgI. This is the concentration, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14th, that we need to see in order to start precipitating. So I'll just put that over here, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14th molarity. Okay, and now from this information, we can figure out which one is going to precipitate out first. What's the rule? Well, for molar solubility, if you want to precipitate out first, the one with the lower molar solubility, ability, is going to be the one that, um, precipitates out first, right? Because you got to get to the lower numbers before you get to the higher numbers. So lower molar solubility, solid will form first. So 10 to the negative ninth versus 10 to the negative 14th. 10 to the negative 14th is obviously a smaller number than 10 to the negative ninth. You could think about where negative 14th is versus negative 15th on a number line. Negative 14 is lower than negative 9th. So in this case, the lower one 
will precipitate out first, which is AGI. AGI will form first. And that is your answer. Whoop, whoop. Okay. So what'd you think? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's keep studying hard. Tell your friends about this cool channel. We might be able to help them out as well. And it just gets the word out there, you know, in the YouTube universe that this channel exists. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for that. And I'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.